here and back with a new video. Finally, three weeks. This is without doubt my most requested video. I get asked every single day without fail for recommended books. So I have a list of about seven um, of my favourite books. This is by no means an exhaustive list. I did post quite a comprehensive um, master post on my Tumblr of different books, different websites, um, different blogs, different online courses um, and YouTube videos that give you an insight into neuroscience and psychology and that kind of stuff. So if you're interested, I will put the link to that in the description. But for now, I'm going to talk about my seven favourite books. The first one I have is this, and this is called Big Ideas in Brief by Ian Crofton. And I love this book so much. This, okay, I have to admit something. This was actually going to be a present for my friend. And I, when I bought it, I was like looking through it. I was like, mm, I might actually keep this for myself. I did buy her something else. Like, I'm not a bad friend. But, um... Yeah, this is a really great book, and this is not like completely science-based, this book. This is basically like big ideas in brief. <laughs> well, you can't explain that. But um, let's have a look. In the context, so in context, they have big ideas in philosophy, religion, science, politics, economics, society, psychology, and the arts. So it basically gives you an overview and an explanation of, you know, all the different theories, um, and concepts in all these different topics. So, for example, if I just open it randomly, so they have a just a short account of evolution. Um, they just talk what talk about what it is. Um, find something different. Um, they have one on artificial intelligence, and the reason that I love this so much is because I have a really short attention span. Often, I find it hard to really concentrate on a big book. So. And, but I still like learning, so this is a good book if you like that. Next book. If you follow me on Tumblr, you know I talk about this book so, so, so much. This is Sapiens. It's without doubt my favourite ever book. Um, Again, it's not that sciencey. I, I love how it's like, oh, these are my favourite science books, and then I've got like, my first two aren't really science. But um, this does talk about science. It talks about how human beings have evolved, how different behaviours have changed. Um, every single chapter you learn so much and it really changes the way you see the world, the way you think about the world, so yes. I don't want to be dramatic, but this is a must read for everyone, honestly. Like, I love this book. It's my book. <laughs> um, the next book. The next book is something that I, I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with. This is Phantoms in the Brain. Um, this book is pretty much on every single medicine, every single neuroscience, every single psychology reading list that I've ever seen and I can see why. I read this when I was ill and not that anyone cares but <laughs> he talks about um, his different patients and the different disorders he encounters as a doctor and he also talks about the different experiments he does. Um, that sounds really scary. He doesn't like experiment on his patients in that way but like he he finds really innovative ways to help um, cure his patients, I guess, if you can say that. Um, and I really like that. He also talks about how ideas of science and um, the different theories in medicine have changed over time as new technologies have been brought through. So yeah, that's a really interesting book. I really recommend it. This next book is also by a doctor um, and this is called Do No Harm by Henry Marsh. And this is, um, obviously I'd recommend this to anyone who wants to be a doctor um, or is interested in studying medicine um, but also anyone that like you know I'm not I'm not gonna be a doctor I'm sorry grandma I know you wanted a doctor but um, <laughs> he talks about the power and the responsibility that a neurosurgeon has you don't really think um, but you know if they have a tiny lapse in concentration they could completely disable their patient or um, kill them or like he talks about all the different outcomes that could happen and this is really good you really appreciate you really appreciate how fragile but also how complex the human body and the brain is so yes give this one a read okay my next one this one this is how we decide by Joan Lira this one was actually 
blah, blah, recommend, blah, blah, recommended. <laughs> this one was actually recommended to me by my cousin who studied neuroscience at Harvard. So I think we can take her word for it that it's very good. But I did give it a read too. And even my mum gave it a read and she is just not into science at all. Um, so yeah, this one's really good. What I think is really interesting in this is he talks about how emotions and logic influence our decisions. Um, but what I one of the major things I got from this was that, you know, we tend to think that logical decisions are always like the best things to make. We should always rely on logic as much as possible and not let emotions influence us too much. But in here, he does discuss about how important emotion is in our decision and essentially how it's impossible to make a decision without using emotions. Um, so yeah, that one's really good. Okay. The next one, this is Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers by Robert Sapolsky. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but this guy, I actually absolutely love it. This book doesn't look red, and that's because I downloaded a PDF coffee. Coffee? <laughs> PDF coffee. I downloaded a PDF copy before I bought this book, um, and I read it. And then recently I decided to buy a hard copy because I loved it so much. And he writes so well. This book is actually about stress and like stress related diseases. Um, he talks about the biology of stress, but he also includes about how stress can affect our lives. And um, so he talks about um, stress and reproduction, stress and sleep, uh, stress and addiction, and then also about different um, ways coping mechanisms work. And what I really like about this is very scientific, you know, it's not you know, you, you might be like, oh, it's about stress, like it's a weird hippie self-help book, but it's not. It's a very scientific book. But yeah, definitely get this book. This is really one of my favourite science books ever. So yeah, get that. And my last book is The Brain. And I love this book. This was actually lent to me by a friend of my mum's. Um, and... It really explains everything so simply. So if you're watching this and you're sort of interested in neuroscience but want like a good introduction book, this is definitely it. Um, it's it's simple, like I said, but it's not like oversimplified. It really just explains things in clear um, in clear words and with clear facts. Um, and it's so interesting. Like, yeah, okay, I can't recommend this enough. You should go read it. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this was not like the an exhaustive list by any means. I do have a collection of like textbooky style reference books. If you're interested in that, um, do let me know because I'd be happy to film that for you. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and um, follow my Tumblr as well because that's primarily where I post. I know I post YouTube videos like once every three weeks or a month. I don't post I don't post on YouTube as often as I post on Tumblr so I will always be on there so make sure you follow me there and I hope you have a really good day because it's very sunny today and I'm going to my friend's house so I'm excited for that. Okay bye! <laughs>